Now we go to processing how to make cheese. We start from milk, from raw milk. And in the factory, sometimes we do thermization. It's just a step to inactivate psychotrophic bacteria so we can store raw milk for a further period of time in the factory before processing. After thermization, we have to cool the milk down to 4 degrees C or below again because thermization is a very mild heat treatment which does not destroy all microorganisms. The next step would be pasteurization. And if you remember, pasteurization is to destroy pathogens to make the product safe. Pasteurization also to destroy a part of spoilage microorganism to make product last for a longer time, increase the cell life. And there are some optional treatment somewhere here, some optional treatment, bactophagation or microfiltration. Bactophagation, we discuss in chapter 6, this is actually centrifugation. But to remove spore, not to separate creams, but to remove spore from milk. Or they can apply microfiltration. It's a filtration, but the pore size of the membranes, the pores of the membrane have a small size. It's a small that retain the spore, retain bacteria. So the milk that's passed through the membrane has less sparse number, less bacteria number. So when we do these two technology, then we remove part of spa. Okay. If we only do pasteurization, then we can only destroy vestigial cells of microorganism. But when we combine this, we can remove uh, part of spores as well. So we don't need to use saltpeter or similar additives. Saltpeter is, for example, sodium nitrate. Sodium nitrate, this is used in making cheese to prevent clostridia, the bacteria that make, that can produce spores. And then during ripening, if the spore germinates into the vestigial cells, they will grow and produce gas, and then they may break the textures of the cheese. And this phenomenon is called lake blowing. I think we met this term before. Lake blowing means production of gas at lake state during ripening that may break the textures of the cheese because of the spore germination. So traditionally, we use an additive, sodium or potassium nitrate to prevent that. But more advanced methods, they use this greener technology without using chemicals, for example. And then the next step is standardization of fat content. When we standardize the fat content, we have some extra cream here to make something else. So we already have our material which is standardizing fat content. The next step will be coagulation to make the curve. This is coagulation step. So you have the curve. And what do you need to add for coagulation? In making cheese, we need to use rennet. In other products, we can also add some, you see, calcium chloride, or we even use starter coaters to produce acid to reduce the pH to help the coagulation as well. And for the mechanism, how this will cause the coagulation, check again, chapter 6, part coagulation of caseins. Okay, and then we have the GERD. So depending on the varieties of cheese, we can go somehow different treatments here. We can do pre-pressing, like thin egg, pressing a little bit uh, inside the tank. 
before doing molding. Molding, you put the cur, uh, the coagulum in a mold, and then là trong một cái khuôn, and then we do final pressing. We compress it to release the way. If we do pre-pressing, he's actually you also remove a lot of way, and we press it to remove the way, right? So now we have kind of hard curd already, and then we do brining. Brining is for the salt to enter the products. There's several ways to do. We will look later. Exactly for the salt to go into the products and then the next step will be ripening now we keep our cheese young cheese in a certain temperature at a certain relative humidity of the air for a period of time and normally this is quite long months uh, not days weeks but two months already and then we have the product which is ready for distribution we go back a little bit to discuss the other variety of cheese here for making cheddar cheese cheddar cheese originates from uk if the table if you remember so they applied somehow different procedure here they have a process called cheddar ring for the images you can just go to good go and search but they have the curve and large curve like, like this and they pie up the curve so the heavy mass is heavy here will compress each other to release the way and then they do milling let's say milling or grinding and then hopping hopping is also similar like molding but the shape is different and then they just compress the powder from the milling here they add some salt as well mixing together and they compress it so they have the cheese which is ready for ripening as well right so we now go to explain some important step in making cheese raw milk of course the main material for making cheese milk should have a high quality in terms of chemical in terms of microbial quality if we don't have good microbial quality if the number of microorganisms is so high then we have to pasteurize at high level we have to heat if we heat too much then it's difficult for enzyme rennet to cause to do the coagulation why if you remember before that we have a case in my cell and on the surface of case in my cells the hydrophilic part of kappa this a kappa case in are distributed on the surface because they are hydrophilic they love the serum of a lot of water outside and then if we heat too much what happened with whey proteins they denator whey protein will be denator unfolded and may form the sofa bridge with kappa casein this is actually beta lactoglobulin a whey protein and this one can also form complexes with another beta or with another alpha lastan boomy and then you have a lot of complexes complicate interaction by high heating and then it's become difficult for the enzyme remnant to attack to split this place we have space hindrance it's difficult for the enzyme to go there because to cause coagulation to make the curve the enzyme need to cut this position if you remember okay and that is why the quality for making cheese should be high and the processing especially the ripened cheese take a long time so if the quality in terms of microbiology is not good 
maybe it will be spoiled on the way. Now, also important material is the enzymes, of course. The enzyme has a scientific name, chymosine. Conventionally, they make chymosine from stomachs of young calves. They can make it in form of liquid or powder, which is available like that. But nowadays, the enzyme from animal now become limited, maybe not enough. So they can also make enzyme from microbial sources or plant sources like papain from papaya, bromelain from pineapple. These are proteases and can also do uh, coagulation vacations as well. Depending on the varieties of cheese, they also use starter culture. For some cheese, they use only rennet, but other cheese, they also add starter culture as well. Starter culture will convert ferment lactose into lactic acid. Lactic acid means will reduce the pH, and this also help to coagulate the casein. And of course, not only the coagulation, but organic acid and other flavor component will contribute to the texture, to the flavor of the products as well. And during the ripening in the last step, the starter code still work, not very fast, but still work and responsible for, for some changes like flavors, gas production, and so on. We will see later on. And the other material, actually some additives here, they use calcium chloride. Why calcium chloride? Because this is soluble, dissociate into calcium 2 plus. Calcium 2 plus then mean can link to the two minor group of protein, right? And they can link protein together, means that they can bring casein together so casein will coagulate better so calcium chloride is also to have the coagulation improve the function of enzyme and weight separation by enhancing the synthesis of the curved particles so when they use this it's have to release more weight and then saw peter this is an additive the nitric soda, potassium, or sodium. This is used to prevent clostridia, clostridium botidicum, for example. The one that produces spore, that's called lake fermentation or lake blowing. So we just saw the term lake blowing. Similar. Why do we use nitrate? Because during the processing, during the ripening, Nitrate is converted into nitrite. Nitrite is like this, and nitrite is very active against Clostridia bacteria. Especially nitrate, nitrite is also applied in quite a number of products in meat processing for that function. We just look at this image, it's also nice to see what do we lose what do we gain in making cheese from milk now on the left side we have milk milk contain a lot of water 87.5 percent milk contain mineral mineral about 0.75 to 0.85 percent proteins you have protein 3.3 percent fat 4 percent other dry matter, what is other dry matter? Mainly lactose. Lactose, 4%, if you remember. Uh, 4 by 6, sorry. 4 by 6%. This is the composition of milk. Now, when we make cheese, what do we lose? We lose a little bit of fat, right? We lose a part of proteins, especially what do we, what kind, what type of protein we lose whey protein this one when whey proteins are native when they are not denated they will not coagulate 
And when we do pasteurization, not strong pasteurization, then they are not denated. When they are still soluble in the whey, when we remove the whey, then we remove the whey protein. So we lose quite some percent. And if you remember, whey protein occupy 20% per total protein in milk. Minerals, yes. If the minerals are soluble in serum of milk, then we lose. So we lose quite a lot. Lactose, we lose a lot of lactose because lactose is soluble in whey. And when we remove the whey, then of course we lose the lactose. Water, when we make cheese, we also lose a lot of water. We maintain only part of water. And sometimes we add some salt, for example, calcium chloride. Now we add, so we gain a little bit this salt as well. See, if we compare like this, so then from a high volume of milk, we obtain smaller amount of cheese. And the process is complicated, take a long time. This is why normally cheese is more expensive than fermented milk or consumption milk products. And this is also one of the disadvantages for this product to be popular in developing countries because it's expensive for the people, majority of consumers.